Welcome to my channel. My name is Adrian and today we are continuing to model the Rankine cycle and we are adding some feed heaters to the system. Let's get started. Now, if you haven't watched my previous video, I highly recommend you go and watch them first before watching this video. It will just give you a nice foundation on how Python and Pyromat works in getting all the steam table properties for the Rankine cycle, how you use Pyromat to calculate the thermal efficiency of a Rankine cycle. Otherwise, let's consider the problem. Now on your screen, you will see a nice diagram of the Rankine cycle and we have added a feed water heater. Now, essentially what happens is that steam is bled from the turbine and is added to the feed water, heating up the water as it gets pumped to the boiler. The benefits of this is that the water gets heated up to a certain temperature, so the boiler does not need to heat it up from the temperature where it's at at the condenser all the way before it enters the turbine. It gets preheated a bit before it enters the boiler and as such, the coal that you need to burn or the heating that you need to add to the boiler is not as significant and your thermal efficiency will benefit from it. Right, so steam is bled from the turbine and in our case the steam that is bled will be added to the feed water in the feed water heater so it will be combined with the heater and um, with the water and all that mixture will be pumped to the boiler and we set the fraction of the steam that is bled to the feed water heater we annotate as y so that's a fraction a given fraction that we don't know yet that is bled from M5 to the feed water heater and then the rest gets sent to the condenser. So if you read the problem, consider a regenerative cycle using steam as the working fluid. Now steam leaves the boiler and enters the turbine at four megapascal and 400 degrees Celsius. Now after expansion to 400 kilopascal, that is still inside the turbine, some of the steam is extracted from the turbine to heat the feed water in an open feed water heater. So at 400 kilopascal, some of the steam is bled out of the turbine and into the feed water heater. The pressure in the feed water heater is 400 kilopascal, so it stays at 400 kilopascal. And the water is leaving is saturated liquid at 400 kilopascal. All right, so the steam not extracted expands further through the turbine to 10 kilopascal, which is the pressure of the condenser. And now we need to go and determine the size efficiency. Now here at the bottom I'm just adding some equations now looking at the mass flow of the steam entering and exiting the turbine so we annotate the mass flow as m.5 subscript 5 that is the total amount of steam entering the turbine and then a fraction is bled out of the turbine and that is annotated as y so we can write y equals m6 divided by m5. That is the fraction steam bled from the turbine. And then we can rewrite m6, m.6 as y times m5. And also we can say the mass flow at 0.7 is one minus this fraction that was bled from the turbine times m5. So that is the remaining steam exiting the turbine, entering the condenser. And then also because that amount of steam entering the condenser is being pumped through the first pump to the feed water heater, that mass flow is the same so mass flow at 0.7 the mass flow at 0.1 the mass flow at 0.2 is all the same and that is 1 minus y multiplied by m dot subscript 5 so that is just our convention for the mass flow um, that we need to take note of all right so now we can get started by doing some calculations so as always first you go and import pyromat and we configure it, making sure that our unit pressure is kilopascal and that our default pressure is 100. And then we assign the multi-phase water properties, this multi-phase steam table properties to a variable called MP, short for multi-phase water. And now we're going to start off with the low pressure pump. Low pressure pump just meaning that it's pump number one, which will pressurize the water from 10, 10 kilopascal to 400 kilopascal. So I've noted it down. The pressure at point one is 10. That is the pressure of the condenser. And P2 is the water being pressurized by pump one, the low pressure pump to 400 kilopascal. So now we need to determine the work that is required by pump one to pressurize the water from 10 to 400 kilopascal. Now we can do that by saying that the work of pump one is some volume. We're going to donate that specific volume as V1 times the change in pressure. Now change in pressure here will be P2 minus P1. We know that the only unknown in this case is V1. So we can say that specific volume at point one is the inverse of density. And we can get the density 
using our multi-phase water and that is density at the saturation line with a pressure equal to p1 and because it's on the saturation line we need the first element that is for saturated liquid element number one would be saturated vapor so we want saturated liquid and we can see the work required by the pump is 0.4 kilojoules per kilogram we can also easily now calculate the enthalpy at 0.2 so h2 is equal to h1 plus the work required by the pump that is our enthalpy at h2 we now know the enthalpy at 0.2 in order for us to calculate y the value of y we want to make a conservation of energy equation around the feed water heater knowing that enthalpy entering at 0.2 plus enthalpy entering at 0.6 equals the enthalpy exiting at 0.3 if we know the enthalpy at 0.2 we know the enthalpy at 0.3 then we can calculate y which will be some fraction of the enthalpy at 0.6 so that will be the only unknown in our conservation of energy equation so now that we have finished with 0.2 we can move on to calculate the other points that we need so we are going to consider the turbine now so we know at 0.5 the pressure is 4000 kilopascal 4 megapascal is the pressure of the steam entering the turbine at the pressure of 400 degrees celsius but because we're working in kelvin we need to convert it to kelvin so we add 273.15 to change it to Kelvin so that units become Kelvin. Now we can go and calculate the enthalpy value at 0.5 so that is H5 and we can give it our pressure value of P5 and our temperature value of T5 and we can also calculate our entropy at that 0.5 for the same pressure and temperature values. Now, because this is an ideal Rankine cycle, there is no loss of entropy over the turbine, so S6 equals S5. And because we then know the entropy at 0.6, we can calculate our temperature and our quality of the steam at the time when the steam is bled from the turbine. So we can say T6 and the quality at 0.6 equals our T temp when temperature is calculated as a function of entropy. And we can give that entropy value as well as our pressure value because we know P6 given that is 400 kilopascal. And then we want the quality as well. So we just say quality equals true. So it will go and enter the quality value and assign it to the variable x6. Once we know the quality of the steam when it's bled from the turbine, we can calculate the enthalpy at 0.6 and we can give it the values of our quality of x6 as well as our pressure p6. And if we run this, and we can see the quality of the bled steam is very close to saturated vapor, it's 0 0.9757. If we go back to our diagram, we have the enthalpy value at 0.2. We have just calculated the enthalpy value at 0.6. Now we need to calculate the enthalpy value at 0.3. And then once we know that value, we can solve the conservation of energy equation around the feed water heater. So we know P3 is 400 kilopascal. And in the question, it is stated that the water leaving the feed water heater is saturated liquid. We can then get enthalpy at 0.3 as a, the saturate, on the saturated line. And we just give it the pressure is P3 and we want the first element. And now we have all the points to solve our conservation of energy equation. Now the energy conservation equation for the feed water heater is listed here. It is a certain fraction, which we don't know why, times the enthalpy at 0.6. So that is the blade steam plus one minus the fraction y times h2 that is the enthalpy entering the feed water heater from below pressure pump and that all equals h3 which is the enthalpy exiting the feed water heater once the blade steam and the condensate has been mixed together so we can rearrange this equation in to solve y explicitly so y equals h2 minus h3 divided by h2 minus h6 so we can go and we write that down and if we solve that we can see that the fraction of the steam entering the turbine which needed to be bled at 400 kilopascal is 16.54 percent so that is the amount of steam that needs to be bled from the turbine to heat up the water to saturated liquid at 400 kilopascal. Now that we have the value of Y, we can go and 
solve for the rest of the system. So next up, we can calculate the work extracted by the turbine. Now that is the difference or the change in enthalpy over the turbine. So that would be H5, the enthalpy at 0.5 minus the fraction Y times H6. That is the steam blade from the turbine minus one minus the fraction times H7, which H7 is the enthalpy of the steam exiting the turbine entering the condenser. Now the only unknown here is H7. And in order for us to calculate the enthalpy at 0.7, we need to know what is the quality of the steam extracted, and what is the quality of the steam once it's exhausted from the turbine. So we can do that by saying that P7, pressure at 0.7 equals pressure at 0.1. That is the pressure of the condenser. Once we know that, then we can calculate the quality X7, which is done with the use of calculating temperature as a function of entropy, S equals S7, P equals P7, and we want the quality as well, that we set is true. Um, we need the entropy at 0.7, we know the entropy at 0.7 is equal to the entropy at 0.5, because this is an ideal Rankine cycle. So looking at that, we'll have everything, and then the only thing left to do is to calculate H7. So enthalpy at 0.7 is now H for a certain quality given as X7 and a pressure given as pressure number seven. So now with everything, now we can solve for the cell and the work generated by the turbine is 980.4 kilojoules per kilogram. Next, we can go and consider the high pressure pump. Now the high pressure pump is the pump that pumps the feed water from the feed water heater through the boiler to the turbine. And the pressure is raised from 400 kilopascal to 4,000 kilopascal or 4 megapascal. So P4 is given. We know P3 that is also given That's 400 kilopascal. Now we know the work of the pump is equal to specific volume at 0.3 multiplied by the change in pressure that would be P4 minus P3. Now the only unknown here is our specific volume V3 and specific volume is the inverse of density. So that's one over density, which we can calculate. And because it's a saturated liquid before it enters the high pressure pump, we can get that value. And that is P equals P3. And we want the first element for saturated liquid. So once we've got all that, we can run the cell and we can see the energy required by the pump is 3.9 kilojoules per kilogram. Now we can go and calculate what is the heat added to the steam by the boiler. And that again is just the change in enthalpy. So that will be H5 minus H4. Now we don't know what H4 is yet, enthalpy at 0.4, but we just calculated the work required by the high pressure pump. So we can just say H4 equals H3 plus the work required by pump two. So that's the value for H4. So we can run the cell and energy input by the boiler is 2,605.9 kilojoules per kilogram. And now we have everything needed to calculate the thermal efficiency. So now the last thing we can do is calculate the thermal efficiency. Eta is the network that we extracted from the system divided by the heat we added to this fluid through the boiler. And that is equal to the work extracted by the turbine minus the work required by the pump low pressure pump, but this is multiplied by our fraction because not all the fluid or all the steam was pumped by the low pressure pump. Some of it was bypassed. Some of it was bypassed through the feed water heater. That's why we are multiplying it by one minus the fraction. And then the work required by pump two that was pumping all of the, the steam or all of the saturated liquid through the boiler. So there's no need to multiply that by the fraction at all. And then we divide it by the heat added by the boiler. We also need to multiply that by 100 to change it to a percentage. And that will give us a thermal efficiency of 37.46%. So by adding a feed water heat to the system, we can increase the thermal efficiency of the system. If you've looked at my previous videos, you would know that by just using saturated vapor, our thermal efficiency is around 30%. And then by adding a reheat, our thermal efficiency increases by 35%. But now we've just got superheated steam that enters or that goes through one turbine, there's no reheat. And by using a feed water heater, we can still get the thermal efficiency to 37.46% which is quite good. And that is the benefit of using a feed water heater. The heat required to heat up 
the saturated liquid to superheated steam is less because of the feed water heater. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, do consider subscribing. The next video, we will tackle a real power station scenario. So up until now, it was just the ideal Rankin cycle with a bunch of nice little additions. But now we are ready to go and look at a real power station, which has got a bunch of feed water heaters, which have got a bunch of reheats. It's even got two condensers. It's going to be absolutely amazing to model it. I do hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.